Hey guys and welcome back. We're just gonna touch on something rather interesting and, and something that I knew was gonna come along and it looks like Intel has finally, finally responded to Ryzen um, with the launch of their 8th generation chips, so their um, Canon Lake chips or Coffee Lake chips. It's quite confused like the last um, like the last launch because they're they're launching um, these kind of this new lineup but it includes Cabby Lake, Coffee Lake and Canon Lake chips so it's sort of 14 nanometer plus, 14 nanometer plus plus and 10 nanometer chips all within a single family so that's quite confusing in itself. Um, now, officially, Intel have talked about the the mobile the mobile um, CPUs, and unofficially, um, obviously, the desktop range has been talked about online. So you can go to WCCF Tech, you can go to Chip Hell, which is a Chinese site. Um, video Cards has it as well. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about what um, Intel had to say about their mobile desktop range. I think, you know, as normal, it's it's gotten better. It always gets better. It gets more efficient. Um, what I do want to talk about is their desktop range. So I'm um, just looking at the desktop range now. So starting with the i3-8100 going up to the i3-8350K. Um, now these are all Coffee Lake S, which I'm assuming is 14, na yep, it is 14 nanometers. But they've all got four cores, four true cores and four threads. So that's a big step forward for Intel. And that's obviously looking to take on the Ryzen, um, the Ryzen 3 family there. So, you know, they all come with, um, in fact, um, the i3-8300 comes with 8 megabytes of level 3 cache, which is what you were getting in an i5 before. And the i3-8100 base level unit comes with 6 megabytes of cache. So they're all LGA 1151 and... They kind of all go to well the 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 bottom core the bottom core i3 has a base clock 3.6 which is fine, and the other two i3s the um, 8300 and the 8350K have a base clock of four gigahertz. Nothing mentioned about boost clocks yet. Um, now this is where it gets really interesting for me. i5 8400, i5 8600K. These both have six cores and six threads. Um, with the i5-8400, the base unit, non-overclockable, coming in at a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.6 gigahertz. So looking very similar to what AMD was re releasing with Ryzen here. Obviously, looking to mass produce these chips cheaply. Um, they don't want to push the core count too well, the co core clock too much, or else that's going to cause that's going to cause them a problem with binning these chips and. It's going to put the price up, but you know Intel can knock these six-core, six-thread chips out pretty cheaply. That comes with nine megabytes of level three cache, which is again an improvement. Um, importantly, though, i5 um, 8600K is probably the staple gaming chip that people would be looking at, and has been throughout pretty much every iteration of the i5. So that's rocking again, six cores, six threads, with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz. Now that's just on one core I think because below that it says there's a boost clock of all six cores of 4.2 gigahertz. So again that's probably on a par with um, my R5-1600. Yeah I would say so apart from the fact that it's not got hyper, that this i5 doesn't have hyper, hyper threading. So that's fine. Um, i7-8700 and the i7-8700K, which would be their flagship desktop standard part, is coming is coming with, um, <clears throat> pardon me, 6 cores and 12 threads, which is good. It's about time Intel improved. It's a, It really is about time that they made that step, so that's looking again at R5 territory, um, with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.5, and that's with a boost clock across all cores of 4.3 gigahertz. Now that's on the K version. The non-K version of the chip is slightly slower than that. But again, very, very similar specs to an R5-1600X in terms of core count, clock speed. It does lose out, however, on level three cache. These are shipping with 12 megabytes of level three cache, which depending on its speed, 
and how it's connected to the die can have quite a large effect on performance. But what does this mean, guys? So basically, this means fantastic, fantastic for you, fantastic for the consumer, really, really good. It's about time that um, Intel dropped this idea of you know an i5, a quad core being all you need, and the i7. So quad core with hyper threading being like you know what what you need if you want to do a bit more if you want to do a bit of video editing or whatever um so it's really good and like i don't know if they were going to do this or not i don't know if this is truly a response to ryzen it seems likely that the launch of ryzen has had a big part in this but whether or not that's got anything to do with it i think it's positive for the consumer um i also think it's really good because a lot of these chips are lining up with SKUs on um, amd's ryzen platform so does that mean that Intel are also going to align with pricing? They really should. Um, depending on how well these six cores overclock, uh, I mean, I've got a couple of six cores. I've had lots of multi-core CPUs. I know what a pain in the ass they are to overclock at a steady rate on all cores. So I'm kind of thinking we're going to have very, very, very similar performance. Unless the IPC on these is ridiculous, I think the performance is going to be fairly similar it's still going to be slightly ahead of ryzen i would have thought um i still think ryzen will probably be slightly better in productivity tasks but that's yet to be seen um there's a whole lot of other information out there guys like if you want to if you're interested in cpu z scores and things like that um you can head on over to chip hill which is a chinese site and you can look at them there i'm not that bothered about that i'm more interested in the fact that intel are changing their lineup they're actually changing what they do. They've changed their um, product lineup. They haven't done that in a very, very long time. Um, it looks a bit cleaner than this year's um, release did um, with the uh, X299 lineup. I think that was a complete clusterfuck. Um, very confusing. Um, a lot of mixed messages. I don't think many people sort of knew what to do with that information or where it was going to sit in the market. Um, and again, that was largely driven by Threadripper. However, I think the 8th gen lineup, Coffee Lake 8th gen lineup, looks um, looks interesting. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you're not new to the channel, thanks for the support. And don't forget to share that love out there. And I'll catch you again later. Bye.